Ugh. And we're back. So, obviously last time we embarrassed ourselves rather badly. Um, we didn't qualify for Australia, due to mostly an oversight on my part, um, and a bug with the game. But surprisingly, we have actually turned a profit between uh, the last round and, and where we are now, which I I really wasn't expecting to see. It's actually quite encouraging. Um, obviously, we're going to have a false saving in that we didn't generate a lot of wear from running the, the race distance. But definitely it's a, it's as good a start as one could hope for from a, a race that we didn't actually qualify to take part in. Let's take a look at the news really quick. So uh, Michael Schumacher picked up uh, the first pole position of the season while uh, David Coulthard won the first round. Obviously Jano Trulli had an unfortunate accident. Oh dear, so it appears that good old Harv didn't sit tight for us. He's actually signed for Benetton. Um, we're going to have to, uh, I guess, re review our priorities in that regard then and see what we can work out with uh, someone else. Um, both Ferraris made the top six, as did the McLarens. Yeah, the less we look at this news, the better. Um... And that we're just confirming that Sauber has signed Giancarlo Fisichella for next season. That's a that's a very early bold move actually, and um, that we have signed Eva Manzoni to be our commercial manager, and Mike Gascoigne has joined us as chief designer. And nothing else is going on really. Although somehow Giancarlo Minardi ended up being the least popular Formula One manager of the last round, which is absolutely staggering considering really. We failed on just as much of a level, if not more. Um, as we already know, we made a profit of $310,851. Can't say no to that. Um, so first priority, I suppose, we're going to try and get the Niz. Actually, we aren't going to do any of that because the game just crashed. Obviously, part of the problem of running such an old game, it's incredibly unstable. So apologies for that. Where were we? Drivers. Okay, so... Deniz wants a three-season contract. It's a little bit longer than I would feel comfortable signing him for, really, because obviously three seasons is a considerable length of time out of a... Uh, I mean, he'll have done four seasons with us by the time his contract expires. That's almost half the time we have. Um, but we can't really say no to that kind of money. Um, if he could take a second driver slot, it would be a little bit easier. Um, but I think we're going to have to go ahead and and extend that offer to him. Okay, so he's agreed. That's kind of, I mean, certainly for next season, that's kind of secured the future of the team, quite frankly. Um, now we need to see if we can get Shinji Nakano to come along. We'll offer him, as well, a three-season deal. I think it might be a little bit too long for him, but it means that we can start afresh going into 2002 with a, uh, a whole new lineup of drivers. Um, the, the weird thing is about this game, actually, is that you can you can win championships sooner with uh, more talented drivers, but I've actually found drivers to be the least important element of, of all the elements that you need to get right to win a championship. The car is absolutely top priority. Um, alongside your ability to... It's kind of like your economic capacity, I suppose. You need to be able to not only research quickly, but also build quickly. And if you have those two departments working flat out, um, whether you're getting your money from pay drivers or you're getting it from sponsors, you can not only be incredibly competitive, but you can actually pick up championships a lot earlier than you might expect. It's just about playing smart. Um, I do think this is probably the smartest decision for us at the moment. Um, I did consider picking up a cheaper, a cheaper driver, um, someone like perhaps Jano Trulli, um, or even actually Alex Vogt. Um He's cheaper than you might expect for such a talented driver, but we're going to offer Nakano. Okay, so yeah, he will not work with Pedro Diniz. And he actually wants a longer contract than three seasons, so that's obviously not going to be something that's going to work out for us. Um, the next best prospect in terms of pay driver would be Ricardo Rossett, but the problem with Ricardo Rossett is he's Ricardo Rossett, so no. Um, we'll try Tora Takagi. 
and we'll offer him three seasons as well, equal number one. It's a bigger increase in our budget by signing him, but obviously he in, in, he's inversely a poorer driver, I feel. Let's see what he says. He too wants a longer contract. Surprising. I'm sorry, Rosset, but I'm not touching you even though you're the last pay driver on the grid. It, it just isn't going to happen. So we'll come back to Takagi next round and see if he'll sign with us. It's unlikely, um, given the fact that we already have a pay driver signed, and very often they will not work together, as we saw with Nakano a few minutes ago. But before I go and do something rash, like sign someone like Salo or Nakano for... Um, not Nakano. Salo or Trulli or Panis, maybe... Um, I'm going to wait and see if we can get that extra six six mil in the bank. Emmanuel Collard, your hair is ridiculous. I'm not even concerned about a test driver at the moment. We'll talk later. Um, okay, this department all seems to be in order. Um, I think we could probably do with picking ourselves up a, a designer or two, just because we really need next year's chassis to be good. Uh, on the construction front, I will pick up an expert. I think, to be honest, it's so important to um, to be able to maximise your build capacity and having that 30% left over that we had last time is, is a little bit too much for me. So if we can just boost the department a little bit, we might find we can get ourselves a, uh, a cheeky spare part or two um, more than we were able to produce previously. And we'll pick up some mechanics as well. So now we've strengthened our department a little bit. You can see here is we managed to... A whopping 2% uh, wear and tear on, on the cars, which is actually great news um, because I will now do some testing, which I didn't actually intend to do, but seeing as we're turning a profit at the moment, I'm going to throw them around for some testing and maybe we'll develop one upgrade package for the season. What you'll find is when your capacity to, um, to research and develop grows, it's it's basically you, you're aiming for sort of three or four upgrade packages a season. Um, and obviously top teams are able to, to match that level of production. Someone at our level can possibly put out two, but I sort of feel you're compromising. It's that classic development hangover, I think, where if you spend too many of your resources trying to develop what is inescapably a, a poor car, which it is, you're not making the best use of your resources. Whereas already... One one round in, I feel comfortable committing all our resources to making uh, next season's car as strong as possible. Um, so we're not going to do any repairs or replacements at the moment. Instead, we're going to set ourselves up for 230, 240 miles of testing. Uh, that's going to cost us 243750 It's a little bit on the high side, but we will, we will take it, I think. Um, not going to make any big changes. Let's just run it. Okay. So, we are now able to improve our chassis. That brings us over to the design screen. The 1999 chassis development has begun. No progress so far. Zero efficiency. Not encouraging. Where are we on the technology front? No progress there either. That is concerning. Although we did make some progress on our active suspension, I'm now going to have to take all our guys off this because we shouldn't have been developing it anyway and throw them onto designing a new diffuser. So the problem is we don't have enough downforce, which you could probably guess with a 50% handling score, and the solution will be a new diffuser. I am concerned that we're not fixing our reliability problems as quickly as we might, but we'll see how that pans out for us. Um, no word from the FIA yet as to what next year's regulations are, so we have no idea if the car that they're not designing conforms to those regulations. Let's knock out some spare parts. Still the same level of inefficiency. So we're still going to have that 30% residual that we can do nothing with. And we have received no upgrades, which I wasn't expecting we would. What I am going to do is make a cheeky investment in... A CAD system. I'm going to go for the best CAD technology money can buy at the moment, which is going to cost us a quarter of a million, um, or 
it handily breaks it down as to what it will charge you each race, in this case $16,666, which is a cost we can absorb, I feel. We're not going to hire a wind tunnel at the moment because there's absolutely no reason to do so. Last thing to check before we proceed is our negotiations. So yeah, we didn't do ourselves any favours there. Peugeot are not willing to offer us a work deal. I'm not interested in a partner deal. So we're going to knock on Ford's door and see if they're willing to be a little bit more flexible. Um, same goes for tyres. We're not going to get a, a work deal here. They're only prepared to offer a partner. I think I think partnership is is fine. Um, there's only one works contract for each supplier anyway, and you know if you given the choice between are you going to give it to McLaren or Williams or Ferrari or are you going to give it to Arrows, it's obvious that we're not going to necessarily win that fight. Likewise, Esso are only offering customer supply. Do you know I'm tempted actually just to? It's a one season deal. It's only two hundred twenty thousand dollars. I might go ahead and and sign that simply because what you can see is it's only a a one bar uh, progress bar. So we can probably sign that deal within a round or two, and then that twenty percent of our staff can go and find uh, other sponsors that give us money that will probably offset that. I mean, I think a single sponsor would more than offset that cost, unless we were desperately unlucky. So we're going to keep that on the go. Peugeot can get to fuck and we'll invite Ford to this particular party. Um, shares in the team have gone up 10,000. I'm not going to sell any shares in the team just yet. I've got a feeling that price might climb if we perform better uh, in the next round or two. Uh, still happy with how our pit crew are assigned. The drivers, I'm going to let them be a teeny bit more aggressive. Um, I may come to regret this because it looks like a small difference, you know, given the scale of the bar, to add an extra dot to it at this time seems very conservative, but you'd be surprised the difference between two, three, and four dots. You really would. Um, off we go. Now set up. Um, seems the winds are blowing for speed, acceleration, brakes, good weather, and a slack wind. So we'll duplicate again. Again, we're just trying to figure out who to throw our resources behind, if anybody. I think I think we're going to try Diniz on the soft tyre, and we'll have Salo on the hard tyre. And the last thing to do is to get our cars in the best shape possible. Right then, to Brazil. If the game doesn't hang, there we go. Okay, so... Denise on the softs, Salo on the hards. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, we both want them on the first. Okay, so at least we're getting a dry session this time. I'm gonna. Oh. Yeah, I was hoping we could be the first car out on track, but it seems one of the Prosts has gone out. I'm gonna put Denise out first. Um. There's a good gap there between us and the Prost, so that's that's encouraging. I'm going to try and avoid traffic on our fast lap if possible, but again, it's really hard to predict. And I'll throw Salo out now. Let's, let's watch the Niz in this bottom left corner. The camera angles obviously aren't dynamic because we're, we're looking at static photos, so uh, I'll break it down for you. The, the top left here is the what the TV cameras are showing which is riveting stuff, I'm sure you'll agree. Then down here we've got control over who we want to follow, and then obviously is the, the map diagram. And again, again one of our guys has got traffic. We've got Salo jostling for position with what I think is a Stuart. Yeah, it is. 
He got past the Stuart and now the Stuart's trying to come back at him, which is very, very odd. I'm going to have him slow off um, and we'll let that Stuart through, hopefully. There we go. Oh, almost lost it, almost lost it. You see what I mean? Like He's only 3 out of 10 on, on how hard he's pushing, really, and he almost lost it coming out of that corner there. That could be indicative of a setup problem. I don't know. Um, I was a bit late on the mark there as well, getting Deniz to uh, to begin pushing. So this might be a poor lap for him. But what we should see is the Prost and the Sauber will put down times before us. Deniz is coming upon some traffic. Uh, Schumacher, um, one of the Saubers. And Sarlo has, I believe, that's a McLaren behind him. So again, we're not going to get a clean lap, I don't think. We'll see what times we get on the board. At least we're going to have a banker, and I don't believe we're going to be so uncompetitive this time round. At least it doesn't appear that way. Now, what we need to consider as well is the possibility that next season we're not going to be offered a uh, a works engine contract. It's not the end of the world for the first season or two. We can take a partner, but if that's the case, I think I'm going to hedge my bets and instead try and get a partner deal with Mugen Honda. Um, simply because out of the partner deals, I think that one, at first glance at least, seems to be preferable. Uh, we need to call our guys in. Uh, Sarlo is topping the board at the moment with a 119.585, which is surprising. I thought he wasn't going to get a clean lap at all. Uh, also, one of the Prosts almost lost it there. Um, second is Alessi, third is Jan Magnussen, fourth is Pedro de Niz on a 120.227. So that actually also goes against what I was expecting. I was expecting de Niz on the softer tyre to put in a faster lap. But again, this is 90s F1 where the soft tyre isn't actually always the faster compound, um, which kind of goes against logic in most cases. Most people would assume you know, a softer, higher degradation tyre is going to give you that, that stronger grip level, but it, it's not always the case, and historically it wasn't always the case either. Salo's in the pits. Let's take a look. No, sorry, Deniz is in the pits. Let's take a look. So he has n there's no problems for us to worry about. I'm going to put him out again on a set of scrubbed softs to see if they come to life on him, really. Um, we're not going to change how hard he's pushing. Go away. Thank you. Now's a good time because we've got a bit of clear track ahead of us. I'll take a look at Salo. Salo again is reporting no problems. I think I'll put him out on another set of scrubs as well and we'll see if they degrade. Um, let's see what's what. Yeah, again, we'll let Schumacher come through, I think. Oh no, he's gone into the box, so out they go. Okay, as you notice, I'm not editing this, this session. Um, Hopefully I don't run out of disk drive space. Um, that's entirely possible. I'm still waiting for a new machine to come through. Um, so what can we expect to see here? Both are, both are clear. Uh, no traffic issues as long as no one comes out of the, uh, the pits and interferes with our evil master plan. I'm feeling quite confident actually, especially in Sarlo. That time is... Obviously we're we're a good, a good deal of time off the pace of the Jordan, but that's kind of what you'd expect, to be honest. Um, Jordan are the third or fourth best team, I think, in the opening season. So, you know, to be ahead of the Saubers and Stewarts is very encouraging. Okay, Deniz needs to turn it up a little bit. Excellent. And we'll get Salo to put his boot down after this corner. There we go. So let's watch, watch a bit of Deniz. That doesn't look particularly spectacular. But, you know, spectacular is not necessarily what we're going for. We're just going for speed. We're going for good, for good performance. Um, once they finish this this uh, series of laps, I am actually going to cut the video 
and we'll let the track rubber in a little bit and they should both have uh, two runs of three laps in which to sort of capitalize on the track clearing up a little bit. Um, Stin has improved. He has improved, 119.3. Um, we're going to call him in. Now the question is what can Salo do? What's hard to tell as well is if Deniz was faster because the scrub tyres are faster or because the track is already rubbering in. There's quite a few cars out. What can Salo do? That's a small improvement as well. He's he's ahead by one thousandth of a se uh, one hundredth of a second. No, it's not even. It's one thousandth of a second. Incredible. So they're very evenly matched, despite the. Uh, the difference in tyre compound. I'm going to bring them both in, we'll let a few minutes pass by and I'll check the quality of the track and then we'll send them out again and see what we can do. So while waiting for the track to rubber in some more I'm just going to show you some information that we've got. So this is the car data for Pedro Diniz. You see he's uh, lost a, a bit of wear on the car there. His tyre temperatures aren't looking particularly great but tyre wear has been generally good. His engine wear though already after six laps that was a fresh engine for this race, and it's already lost. As has uh, Salo's, actually. Salo's tyre temperatures look, mm, I'd say much better, but they don't. They look moderately better. And the tyre is obviously lasting hard, uh, longer, which you would expect for a hard tyre. So I'm actually not going to... I'm going to let Salo do another run on those tyres, and then his final run will do on fresh tyres. Uh, whereas the Niz will do two runs on the next set of tyres, I think. Um, okay, so the temperature of the track and uh, it, how dry it is, is is perfect, but you can see here that the rubber on the racing line is very, very low still. So again, we're going to let the, um, we're going to let the track rubber in a bit more, and I'm, I'm thinking actually that we should expect to see the track temperature to go up a little bit, which might help, especially with, with the NIS. So see you in a few. Okay, a little bit earlier than expected, but we do have a clear track. Track temperature's gone up one degree, and we've got a little bit of extra rubber on the track. I'm going to send them both out for a run, and then we really will stay our hand until the absolute last moment. Um, just a quick update for you. Irvine has taken the top spot. Cars are getting faster, not hugely so, but I've got a feeling we've got a real chance to optimise. I'm going to wait for these assholes to get out of our way, and then I will send Sarlo out first, I think. He's staying on the same set of tyres. Now's a good time. Oh, and Minardi's come out at the same time, but I think we've beaten him out. Let's just watch for them coming out the other side. Yeah, that McLaren's going to cause us some problems, but I think he's going to let him through. Now's a good time to get Deniz on a fresh set of boots. There we go. How's the track looking? Good. Away we go. I really want that Minardi to get out of our way. Or at least Deniz, uh, Salo to fall back just enough that he's not in the clutches of those uh, those Williams. have to say, those Red Williams were probably the ugliest cars of this particular season. I really couldn't stand that livery. I understand there was a financial reason behind it, as there often is, but God, it was ugly. Okay, so the McLaren's coming to the pits. The Minardi's obviously staying out. He was on an outlap as well. Salah's going to crank it. The Williams has got past Deniz, and I think these are Benettons coming up behind us that hopefully we can get rid of as well. I think Salah's going to get a fairly clean lap, unless this Jordan messes us up. Go on, let him through. Okay, so Fisichello has got past us. And now we can slam on with Dinners as well. 26 minutes of the session remaining. See if anything's changed. Salo's still getting much better tyre temperature.
that Minardi is just... It's really messing up Salo's lap, I fear, but we'll see. Have we been able to improve? No. That is very discouraging. I'm calling him in, and we'll, we really will send him out at the last possible moment. I have no interest now in... Uh, I don't know how we managed to get caught up in so much traffic, but that was just our poor luck, it seems. Um, let's see what the Niz can do. Oh, massive improvement for the Niz. Up on a 118.5. Fifth position. Nice work, Pedro. Rewarding my endless faith in you. It's very encouraging. Okay, um... Still no technical problems to report, which is very good. Um, still not taking much more out of the engine. Tire temperatures are not great for either of them, but Sarlo's tire temperatures are much better, which is obviously makes it all the more surprising that he wasn't able to capitalise on that to improve his lap time. But we'll be back in, I'd say, 10 to 15 minutes and try and get him round for another lap. Oh dear, so what has happened is it has begun to rain out of nowhere. None of the uh, the weather monitors gave us an indication this was going to happen. Um, I'm really not sure what's going to happen here. I mean, there is a lot more grip and the track is still dry. I think I'm going to try and get them out super fast on fresh tyres and we'll Salah will be our sacrificial lamb, uh, simply because he really needs to improve. Um, Deniz has managed to hold on admirably to his seventh position, and obviously I don't think that's at risk now. How's the track looking? Still dry, still hot. Yeah, we're going to do our final laps now, because it's not going to get any faster at this point. Let's get Deniz out. There's a chance, obviously, that the track could become incredibly slippery over the course of the fast lap, and we could lose both cars into the barrier. But given where Deniz is at the moment, I'm really, uh, I'm really feeling it's worth the risk. So, get ready to have Salo put his foot down. Look at his cheeky Finnish face. He's not going to let me down. I know it. Come on, Mika. Again tied up with one of the Minardis, but I've got a feeling that's going to be more their problem than ours now. Let's put that lap in. Quick look at the track. Yeah, it's starting to get less dry, as one would expect. Um, <laughs> Deniz coming around now. We'll let him come through that long sweeping left-hander and then he can get a good run into the start finish straight. Okay, it looks like Salo's getting around without any massive drama. Um, I'm no longer convinced that he's necessarily going to be faster. And we might start to see the uh, the rubber on the racing line come down. But there is a possibility that this might have been a smart decision. Round he comes. Can we improve? He can improve. Up into 10th position. Excellent stuff. He'll come in automatically now. I don't have to tell him to come in. Once Deniz has come round and done his lap, we will be able to finish the session. Uh, Let's see where we end up. He has managed to stay clear of traffic, which is encouraging, but the track has been degrading the entire way around the lap. Any improvement? No, no improvement from Diniz. But still, I'm happy with 7th. I don't think we're going to have those positions taken from us. 7th and 10th is much faster than I expected us to, to actually be. And 
to be ahead of Michael Schumacher and Giancarlo Fisichella and Damon Hill, I don't think he's too shabby. I think I think to be honest, this has been a very respectable showing from from the team. Looking down the grid, you know, oh, the weather has changed very, very, very nasty. Um, the Minardis have outqualified the Tyrrells, which doesn't happen very often, but it's always pleasing when it does. Although I love both of those teams. Prost are hanging around at the back. Stewart and Sauber are down at the back. I really thought we'd be in amongst the Stewarts and the Saubers, to be honest with you. I, th- I guess we must have just got lucky on our laps. Um, looks like the McLarens are going to have a 1 2 start. Eddie Irvine takes third. I, I think this is pretty much how we're going to finish now. Um, thanks again for joining me. Um, we're going to have, uh, obviously, the next video will be the race in Brazil, which I hope you'll join me for. Um, I am suffering from some disc disc issues, um, some problems with recording, possibly. I will attempt to record the full race and edit out highlights. If that doesn't work, then I will roll back the save and we'll find a different way to run the race. But whatever happens, I'll make sure you don't miss out on that. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a good one. Catch you next time just occurred to me I probably should have finished the session before uh, signing off like that but as we suspected everything stayed exactly as it was there was no changes or improvements so that is 7th and 10th for the race in Brazil see you then